As a 3D artist, one of the most challenging steps that we are supposed to take is to make hyper-realistic environments. And the best solution to face that challenge is to learn a decent and constant workflow on how to make it, which will actually give us a complete pattern in order to make an environment from a scratch up to the finishing point. So today we are going to learn such workflow which we can always rely on each time that we want to make a forest or jungle environment. We will start by making a detailed forest ground that will help us scatter the different assets using a great add-on called GeoScatter. And we also especially concentrate on the Blender Asset Browser panel. Then we will go deep into the process of making a lighting system in order to get a realistic lighting for our scene. And like always, you can find all the necessary links in the description. So without any further ado, let's get this going. So the first thing that we need to do is to make a ground plane in order to scatter the assets. So press Shift A in the mesh at a circle. And before touching anything, open the button menu and set the fill type on end gun. Then press S and type down 90. Now if you press tab to go into edit mode, we obviously need more geometry for the upcoming vertex group and the color attributes that we are going to make later. So jump back into object mode and go to the modifiers panel and add a subdivision surface. Set both viewport and render on 4. But since this project is going to be pretty heavy, if your PC cannot handle that, you can set it on 2. It will work just fine. Then open the drop down menu and apply the modifier. Now if we take a look in the edit mode, we have much more geometry. But it will work much better if we have a clean mesh. It is not necessary for our case, but since this process is pretty handy in every single project, why not learning that? And there is a add-on for that which is amazing and it is called the Quad Remesh add-on. The link to download it is in the description. After you have downloaded the add-on, go to Edit Preferences and in the add-on, open this drop-down menu and choose Install from Disk. Then navigate to where you have downloaded the add-on. Select it and finally Install from Disk. Then here search for Quad Remesh add-on. Make sure to check this box to activate the add-on. Now if you press N to open the side menu, here you can see the Quad Remesh add-on. So make sure the terrain is selected, then set the adaptive size on 100 and increase the Quad count to 10,000. Then simply click on Remesh it, which will make a new version of this plane which you can see in the outliner which process took barely 3 seconds. And here you can see that the main one is already turned off. And we have a retopo version. So if we select it and go into edit mode, there it goes. We have a much more cleaner mesh to work with. So go back into object mode and delete the main one because we don't need that anymore. Select the retopo version, press F2 and rename it to terrain. And let's give it some displacement. So go to the modifiers panel. Select Add Modifier and in the Deform, add a Displace Modifier. Make a new texture, then click on this icon to go into Texture Panel. You can also go to the Texture Panel from here. Set the type on Clouds. And I want a tiny bit of displacement, so increase the size to 6. And set the depth to somewhere around 5. Then I press Numpad 1 to go into Front View. Let's move it up and also rotate it to be more of a flat train with almost no steep. We can now apply the modifier. Then to be sure, right click, set origin, origin to geometry. And also press Ctrl A to apply the rotation and a scale. The next step is to add a decent material to the train. And for that, in the assets that you have downloaded, there is a texture folder. In that folder, we are going to use this one leaves root and soil too. Head over to the render panel, set the render engine on cycles and device on GPU compute and switch into rendered view. Then since it is too dark, press shift A and in the lights add a sun. Let's move it aside, go to the light panel and increase the power. 
This will work for now. Later we will adjust it much more according to our HDRI. Now open a new window here and switch it into shader editor. You can press N to close the site menu. Make sure the terrain is selected and create a new material for it. And rename it to train to stay organized. Now if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you will have an easier life. So edit preferences in the add-on search for node wrangler. Simply check this box to activate the add-on. Then on the shader editor, select the principal PSDF, press shift Control t to use the node wrangler add-on option. Then from here, navigate to the folder of the mentioned texture, leaves, root and soil 2. Select the diffuse map, hold down the control key and select the displacement. And finally, select the normal map. Then click on principal texture setup. Now, as you can see, this is obviously a mess. So with it selected, go into edit mode, press A to make sure everything is selected, press U, unwrap and choose angle based. Of course, in this case, it doesn't actually matter which one you will choose. Now we can jump back into object mode and here you can see it works. Then here on the mapping node, select all the scale axes and increase them. A value of 50 works fine. But here our displacement map is not actually working. And for that we need to go to the material panel, under setting, set the displacement type on displacement and bump. What does it exactly do? If we increase the scale, we can see that. Something like this. And if you think the effect is just too harsh, you can decrease it here on the displacement node. I guess a scale of 0.2 is fine since our terrain is not going to be that much visible. Then to further adjust the base color, we can introduce a hue saturation after that. Since we are going to have a sunny weather for our forest, we can make the terrain a little warmer by a slightly increase the saturation to 1.2 and also the value property on 1.2. Here is the before and here is the after. And if I select the sun and increase its power, this leaf and soil texture appears to be pretty wet, which will result in the terrain to be pretty shiny. It is good for rainy weather, but for our case, let's increase the roughness and set it on 1. Now this is suitable for us. And let's go on with adding our different assets into our scene. We are going to use a really detailed and realistic collection that includes different assets suitable for a forest environment. After downloading, it comes as a zip file and you need to extract it. After extracting, you will find a few different folders. So just to be sure, after you have extracted the file, make sure to put all the folders in one new folder. So go to Edit, Preferences. Here in the File Pass, we have an option called Asset Library. Click on this plus icon to add a new library. Navigate to the mentioned folder. Open the assets collection and we cannot see anything which doesn't matter. Just click on add asset library. Here you can see the new library is added. You can rename it to forest assets. And don't forget to click on the hamburger icon to save preferences. So that next time you open Blender, it won't be lost. Now to see our assets, expand the timeline and switch it into Asset Browser. Here open the Libraries menu and choose the Forest Assets. And there it goes. These are high quality assets that will always come in handy for you. Now let's install the GeoScatter add-on. If you have used the GeoScatter add-on before, you are kind of familiar with the workflow. But if you are new to it, you can find the link in the description. It is a paid add-on, but it is definitely the best add-on that I have ever used. And US Scatter is not the sponsor of this video. Then to install the add-on, go to Edit Preferences. Open this drop-down menu and choose Install from Disk. Then navigate to where you have downloaded the add-on. Select it and finally Install from Disk. And in the site menu, you can see the GeoScatter add-on. From here, select the emitter object, which is our train. And let's start with adding the main trees. So in the asset browser, you can see there are a type of trees that are called birch trees. There are 11 of them. Let's move aside a little bit, then drag and drop all 11 of them into the scene.
Select all of them, press M to move them to a new collection and call it Birch Trees. Now to add them on our train, make sure you are on solid view because this is going to drastically affect the viewport. Make sure all of them are selected, then in the Geo Scatter, open the Density Scatter option and choose a Scatter Objects. If this message comes up, press OK since the Geo Scatter automatically hides it in the viewport because that's pretty heavy. So we can unhide it from here. If we turn it on, that's going to be really heavy. So I recommend keeping it off until we make the necessary adjustments, but I'm going to keep it on since I want you to see the changes in real time. First, let's rename this scatter to birch trees. Then if we click on this icon, we can choose a proper color for this scatter. This seems fine. Then open the distribution, which is almost the most important one. And under the density, decrease the instances and set it on 0.06. Now, if you like, you can enable the trees birch scatter. It is much lighter now. Then for the rotation, let me turn off the overlays. Since trees most of the times go straight upwards, we can enable align normal and also the vertical influence and increase it to 0.85. We can also give them some random rotation. The tilt is just too much as you can see. Let's set it on 5. Now let's work with the scale which is really important. So let's enable the default scale. The X, Y, Z look fine but under uniform we can increase the factor and set it on 1.6. Let's go down. We can also give it a little bit of pattern. It is not that necessary but in some cases it can make major modifications. So let's enable pattern 1 and create a new pattern. We can also tweak the setting of this pattern by clicking on this icon. You can see it is already set on Musgrave and there are a lot more options that you can choose but Musgrave is fine. We can set the scale for example. We can set the scale on 0.5. Let's leave the rest as they are and I guess if we turn off the density we will get a better result. One important tip, you can see that there are not enough trees but there are. If I turn on the overlays it is obvious that most of the trees are turned into bounds to help us have a faster viewport. To prove that in the displays enable display as and let's choose a placeholder. This one seems nice. Increase the scale to 1.5. And there it goes. You can see how many instances we have on this train. And that seems enough since we are going to add other assets as well. And setting a placeholder also amazingly helps to have a faster viewport. Then later on, after we have scattered our assets, I want to have a cabin somewhere in the middle of the train, somewhere around here. So I have to remove the trees from this part and for that we can use the culling mask which has so many different options. For this one let's choose the Bezier area. How does it work? Press shift A and in the curve add a Bezier curve. Let's move it up, doesn't matter how much. Press numpad 7 to go into top view. Then press tab to go into edit mode. This is our curve. It is pretty small. So press A to make sure all the vertices are selected, then press X to remove them. Let me go back a little bit. Choose the draw tool, not the annotation tool, the draw tool. And draw any shape that you like. Then press X to remove them. Let's move it up again to have a better look at it. And let me tweak it a little bit. So something like that looks nice. Then in the calling mask enable Bezier area. And from here choose the curve that we just made. And boom, it is pretty interesting. You can of course move it or change the shape of it at any time that you like. And it will work in real time. So the first scatter is done. Now let's make the second one. But before that, since we don't need these birch trees anymore, we can disable them in the outliner. It also helps to have a faster viewport. Now in the asset browser, if we scroll down, you can see these two trees that are called Tree Young. Drag both of them into the scene. 
Select both of them, press M to move them to a new collection and call it Young Trees. Make sure both of them are selected and before scattering them, turn off the first scatter, otherwise it will get really messy and also really heavy. Then in the density scatter, choose a scatter objects. Hit OK and let's take a look. Again, keep it off until we have made the adjustments. Now let's adjust it, starting with the most important one, the distribution. Set the instances on 0.05. Now, if you like, you can turn it on. And to have a better look, scroll down and enable display as. Let's choose a placeholder. This one is fine. A scale X and Y on 1.2 and Z on 1.4. These young trees are going to be smaller trees covering the empty areas of the terrain that the first scatter didn't cover. And let's give it the same colin mask. Enable Bezier area and choose the Bezier curve. There it goes. You can of course invert it by clicking on this icon, which works exactly the opposite. Under the rotation, give it the same vertical influence, 0.85. Let's go to a scale. Enable default scale, I guess the numbers are just fine. So let's enable the random scale and set them on 0.7 to make them a little taller. And done. Don't forget to rename it to young trees. And let's click on this icon and give it a proper color. Now we can go to the rendered view to take a look. Let me hide the overlays and also turn on the first scatter. Seems really fine, but just wait until we add our HDRI and make our lighting system. It will look fantastic. 